We are going to kill your science. We will do it with our sofons. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 bits of true science in the Netflix series Three Body Problem to make sure you're in the know. Naturally, there are spoilers ahead, so be warned if you haven't seen the show or finished the series. You have no idea what they can do. You think you do, but you don't. Number 10, The Three Body Problem. No computer can predict the behavior of three bodies indefinitely. With three suns in the sky, every civilization ends in chaos. More than just the title of the show, the three-body problem is also a centuries-old issue in physics. In simple terms, it's the realization that any space or system with three things in it, three bodies, is inescapably difficult, even impossible to reliably predict. The only explanation for these observations is that this planet is part of a three-body star system. Whereas with two bodies, say a star and a planet, it's simple to foresee how each will affect the other through gravity. When you add a third, it gets messy. Nevertheless, in the show, the three-body problem is what Jin and then Jack must try to solve if they hope to save the mysterious world inside the game that's under the gaze of three suns. There will eventually be a cataclysm from which we cannot recover. Our planet will be ripped in half, or pulled into one of the suns, or expelled into space forever. Number nine, the Fermi Paradox. When you say they, who are you really talking about? Do you think they're in contact with aliens? It's a classic problem in science that runs right through the very heart of Three Body. The Fermi Paradox is the seemingly simple contradiction between the statistical likelihood that aliens should exist and the real world reality that we still haven't found any. It's said that the paradox was first voiced by the famed 20th century physicist Enrico Fermi during a lunchtime conversation with colleagues, at the end of which Fermi is said to have exclaimed, quote, so where is everybody? Or words to that effect. Where are all the aliens? And Three Body Problem is dead set on delivering an answer. I don't quite understand. Are you trying to tell us that they're real? We call them the Santi. Number eight. The wow signal. Back in 1977, Ohio State University detected a 72 second sequence. They called it the wow signal because it made all the astrophysicists go wow. In an early meeting between Wade and Clarence, the latter mentions to the former a bizarre moment in modern scientific history. And the wow signal actually is a real world phenomenon and an enduring mystery. As Clarence explains in the show, it really was a hugely unusual radio signal, detected by the Big Ear Radio Telescope at Ohio State University in August 1977. The strength and apparent uniformity of the signal lead many to believe that it may have been some kind of extraterrestrial callout. In reality, the WOW signal reportedly wasn't picked up anywhere else besides Ohio, although in the show, Clarence says it was also heard in China. What's it say? No one knows. No one's been able to decode it, and nobody outside of Ohio State detected it. Except for one observatory in Northeast China. Number seven, solar amplification. Took me eight years to receive a response last time. We might have to wait. They've been trying to reach you this whole time. What? Ever since they got your message. Whereas the wow signal very much did happen, the messages sent from Earth into space in the show are a little more debatable. Ye Wenjie's use of the sun to amplify her call to alien life is a key moment in Lu Xing's original book series as well. But for years, there'd been doubt among readers whether this particular celestial trick was really possible. Then, in 2017, a theory put forward by the astrophysicist Mikhail Hipka suggested that perhaps we could make use of our sun to magnify outgoing signals by channeling its superior gravity via what's known as gravitational lensing. It was even suggested that the method would make it possible to communicate with Alpha Centauri, the next closest star system to us, and the real-world model for the home of the Sun T in the show. Sometimes I wondered if it was real. It's real. The 
are coming. Number six, dehydration. Is she dead? No. Those who dehydrate fast enough can be preserved. We rehydrate them when a stable era arrives. On the overall scale of science fact to fiction, dehydration perhaps feels as though it should be firmly made up. During her first meeting with the follower, Jin sees the unsettling process close up. And surely it isn't something that ever actually happens. It's too hot, she's gonna burn up. No, she won't. But we do see dehydration in the natural world. Tardigrades are well known for seemingly being able to survive anywhere. Bottom of the sea, inside an exploding volcano, in the cold, dead vacuum of space, they live. And one way they achieve this is via dehydration, entering into an extreme state where they lessen the water in their bodies to just 1 or 2 percent of what it usually is. Of course, humans can't dehydrate just yet, but it isn't quite beyond the pale that an alien force would. Is it possible? It is, Emperor. I advise you to waken your dynasty and let it prosper. Rehydrate! Number 5. Nanofiber Weapons The brutal destruction of Judgment Day along the Panama Canal is easily one of the most dramatic moments in the series. Augie Salazar's world-changing, ultra-thin, next-level materials get their first proper showcase outside of the lab, and it is a bloodbath. What was that? I don't know. Did we schedule a fire drill? What's disturbing, though, is that it's a scene that arguably is possible. Nanofibers in general do exist and are being experimented with. Their real-world applications are usually a lot more positive, with widespread uses in energy, construction, and medicine. However, essentially invisible razor weapons are also theoretically achievable. The good news is that something to the scale of slicing up a boat? Well, we're not there yet. But with this scene in mind, it's no wonder that nanotech is already heavily regulated. Congratulations, Dr. Salazar. Number 4. The Staircase Project Here's my challenge to you. Find me a way to get a probe to 1% light speed or faster utilizing existing technology. If you can dream up a solution, I want you to come down to Witchwood Manor and present your proposal. In the second half of the series, it's all hands on deck for Jin's kind of bonkers space brain brainchild. It's a bid to line the root of a space probe with hundreds of nuclear weapons, explode them all at just the right time, and so propel the probe to 1% light speed. And if that sounds like it makes sense, it's because actually it does. I agree, the margin for error is small, but it's not impossible. So-called nuclear pulse propulsion is another real-world approach and theory that the books and show explore. In the Cold War, the U.S. experimented with it as part of the then-top-secret Project Orion. Using it as a kind of extended catapult to launch one small object multiple light-years through space is stretching it to the extreme, though. So perhaps the eventual issues with Staircase are not that surprising. All hands, be advised we've had an anomaly. Trajectory is deviating from the predicted value. Number 3. Human Hibernation Is it alive? He's not dead. He's not alive, he's somewhere in between. For a month now. Hibernation technology is key throughout the Three Body books, while in the series it becomes increasingly important in the later episodes. First off, there's the brain that the staircase probe is carrying, frozen as it is, for its voyage into the void. And then there's Wade's early hints towards pausing his own life at some stage in the future. You're going into hibernation? As soon as I can. Who's going to run things here? I am. At the moment, hibernation, suspended animation, torpor, whatever you want to call it, humans cannot do it. However, it has long, long been said, and even promised, that it will be possible in the future. And in fact, that it has to be possible in the future if we ever want to travel beyond our solar system. At present, Three Body is dealing very much in the realms of theoretical science, but maybe not for long. The future's not as far as it used to be. Not for us. Number 2. Sophons Why do you want to know about higher dimensions? 
Does the word cell phone mean anything to your boss? In the show and the books, the Sophons are what really shake things up for the humans. They're tiny, proton-sized supercomputers that impact Earth in various ways and communicate with the sun through quantum entanglement. They're built by scaling up and down through extra dimensions, folding and unfolding matter, until an incredible amount of information and power gets contained within an incredibly small space from our point of view. If their Sophons can see and hear everything, won't they know our plans? Let them listen. It's why you can't see the Sophons, but they can still make the universe blink or put an eye in the sky. In reality, humans can't build Sophons, although in theory they make sense. You can't make a computer that small. It's impossible. Impossible for you. The more general AI reconstruction of the Sophons, or in fact of any object into human form, as we see in the show, certainly is possible though. We don't look anything like this. This is all for your benefit. What do you really look like? You wouldn't like it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Dark Forest Civilization number 152 was destroyed by a trisolar day. But in this civilization, you have successfully revealed the basic structure of the star system. The game has now entered level three. While it's never exactly front and center in the show, the dark forest theory still permeates every aspect of the story. Proposed by Liu Suxing in the trilogy's second book of the same name, the dark forest is an imagining of the universe in which all civilizations, if they have any hope to survive, are hunters in hiding. It's said that life in the cosmos should tread carefully through space as though trying not to rustle the leaves of a forest. My lord. My lord? We are afraid of you. It's also implied that to survive in the forest, aka the universe, it's either remain entirely unnoticed or kill or be killed. And so, with this in mind, the actions of Ye Wen Jie at Red Coast Base are made all the more momentous. They are coming. And there's nothing you can do to stop them. What's your verdict on Three Body Problem? And which bit of the show's science are you most impressed by? Let us know in the comments. What's it called again? Stairway to Heaven? The Staircase Project. Yeah. Doesn't sound real. None of it sounds real. Big eye in the sky calling us all bugs. Science fiction. Mm. Fairy tales. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.